Last time on DBZ Kingmaker, our new mercenary company were escorting an alchemist to the city of Restoff. Charged with protecting him from dangers, the mercenaries were attacked by bandits who set up an ambush using a slain monster to block the road. While they were able to handle the bandits, an unexpected new enemy from a giant centipede attacked. After the mercenaries were able to put an end to all the threats, Edwin Foxtrot, the alchemist who hired them, was impressed and offered to arrange another job for the mercenaries that would supposedly have a bigger payout. Arriving at the door to the Aldori Manor and new high potential job ahead, we return to our mercenaries now. You guys are in front of a great hall in the keep of Lady Aldori, um, or Queen Aldori, as this setting will come to know her as. <laughs> you guys are uh, go up to the door. You are with uh, Edwin and Pet, because <laughs> you don't know his name. No. How, how could you possibly know his name? <laughs> There's no way. Never met him before in our lives. Nope, never. Um, and uh, you're talking to the guard. Edwin is just introducing you guys. And the guard eventually just nods and allows you guys in. And he says, um, okay, so I'm going to need you guys to find a seat at the table. I'm going to go explain to the queen that uh, you guys are new adventurers are going to be hired. You want to earn money, right? Well, see? yes, of course. Preferably. <laughs> You're going to get more money than you could possibly dream of. But... Oh, no, mm -hmm. I could imagine... Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, sir, you have not seen this group. <laughs> ah, well... Um, listen, I, I, I got a pretty good, pretty good idea. So come on in and find a seat and please be on your best behavior. Can you do so that? Sorbetta looks at Diego. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of just looks at the group and goes, <laughs> Diego's always on sure his best behavior. sure there's not a kid's table? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the door is open for you. Anyways, let's go on in. <laughs> After you. You are in a great hall. Pet and Edwin will essentially like scutter off to the back as they go to speak to their patron. And you guys can sit literally wherever the hell you want. It's, and Diego goes, call us if you need any help. No, no problem, brah. <laughs> <laughs> If you would like, I will let you go ahead and essentially do perception checks of the people around you. It, like, so that would be how many? Give me one perception check, and you can tell me which person you want to know clues about. I, I, I yeah, guess so I perceive Tartuccio. Let me see. <laughs> I'll just perceive him. I uh, learned nothing. <laughs> you learned nothing. I'm looking at... Okay. Yeah, society wouldn't happen, but he's also going to be checking out the two that are next one. But he's also curious about this guy, but one at a time, I assume. Yeah, one at a time. Because believe me, this is down to the T. So if you walk in and if you're spending this round on just mm -hmm. doing a general society check, yeah. it does not look like you're surrounded by a bunch of classy people. You walk into a lord's house, you kind of expect like nobles and ladies and gentlefolk like in fancy outfits. Right in front of you, you see this like barbarian chick wearing a crop top and her abs open to God and the rest of the world. <laughs> I guess perception then for that. All right. Well, you 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 spent. I know what I'm perceiving. Apparently, abs from what you're getting. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm sorry to be that asshole, but you already rolled society, and that's what you. Oh no, yeah, yeah, no, sorry. That, that's what I was trying to find out. Okay, yeah, so yeah, so th this is what you're learning is that you're not surrounded by ladies and gentlefolk. There's like one yeah. guy dressed as a lord, and it's. I, I pointed this, him out. This feels more like a mercenary gathering. Exactly, yes. Got it. So that is what you perceive. Now, mm -hmm. Diego, you look at your neighbor, and he is a gnome. 
that's what you perceive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got that much? Fantastic. He's got it's a gigantic amazing. he's got a gigantic widow's peak <laughs> and he is just talking so loudly about <laughs> I can't wait to just go and, and uh you know form my own uh land with my own hand and he's just very <laughs> he's very proud of himself. You can uh, Dale pops in with a column and he says, Nice widow's peak. It is very formal. I enjoy it. Does he does the gnome pay attention at all? I will actually, yeah, you're not supposed to do this, but I will actually let you roll diplomacy on that because technically you kind of did what he likes. <laughs> Very regal looking widow's peak you have. Go, go ahead and roll. Let's yeah. see. Oh, cool. oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> the gnome like stands up on the on the seat <laughs> and he's like, that is a distinguished <laughs> like Thank you! <laughs> and he sits down. <laughs> he's just angry about it. <laughs> anyway, and he starts talking to the elf. Diego just, Diego's having phased, like he's not he's just this is normal, like, mm, I see. <laughs> He starts talking to the elf and the dwarf next to him. Meanwhile, uh, what, what, what if like, Diego like insists on telling a story, <laughs> talking over him? <laughs> <laughs> yes, very extreme. It reminds me of this one man I met you know, the, back in the Sancho. <laughs> He's interrupting his story, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. All right. Let me. Roll diplomacy Roll one more time. I, I know we're not supposed to. Roll diplomacy one more time, just because this is very funny. Seven. The gnome is not impressed, but I don't think you can tell. <laughs> like, he's like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know what? That's so interesting. I'm gonna yes, go it is very interesting. You see, what happened next is just, it's just not letting him have a word. Is this the battle of the egos over there? <laughs> yep. And then 20 ninjas arrived. Like every story Diego tells has twenty ninjas in it or something. Uh, that's very interesting. Excuse me. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, no, 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 no. You really want to hear this next part? Come here, come here. <laughs> this guy, right? This dwarf, though. He's like, I'll listen to the next part. How did they die? <laughs> Diego leaves and just <laughs> <this> insulting <laughs> him. <laughs> I wanted to hear that. <laughs> no, you really want to see. You want to hear this next part? Listen. <laughs> Marquis, what are you doing, man? Well, first off, I'm going to mage hand the pitcher of water over to me to fill my goblet, just to be, you know, impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm going to perceive the guy over here that's the only one who did not sidle up and surround us. <laughs> Go ahead. It's a good thing you can see over that dwarf. <laughs> well, I don't see too much over that dwarf. Okay, so even though at the moment you guys as players are only noticing this people, this hall is actually yeah. filled with adventurers. Okay. So there's lots of them. Honestly, he's just a ruggedly handsome looking fella. He's surrounded by some other adventurers that seem to listen to every word that he puts on. Like he's talking to his small group and mm -hmm. they're just patiently waiting as he explains what's happening. So the opposite of Diego. Yeah, essentially. <laughs> essentially this is a man that commands respect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the one who is clearly in charge of that group or at the very least they know him and are, res are respecting his authority over there. Rashim, you have been approached by a gnome. Actually, roll society. You may know who this is. Oh, yes, because I am so good at society. Oh, yes, I, I do know who this person is. Ow. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> they know everything. <laughs> yeah, Rashim, actually, like, you recognize this guy and you've seen him before when you visited Chillax at some point. Uh, Chiliax, excuse me. That's how, that's how it's. Was that, is that a real place? Chiliax. Yeah, Chiliax is what it's <laughs> called. There was a time where you were wandering due to your mission, and you've seen him before, and it seems like he has answered whatever call to adventure this is. At the time, too, he was also looking for an adventuring party, but uh, due to him being obnoxious and <laughs> annoying, you chose not to go with him. <laughs> Mr. Sancho, <laughs> do you mind? Leaving us alone, I believe that our friend here truly does not wish to listen to your story. Nonsense. Look at how captive he is. And of course, a man with as regal of what to speak as he has cannot possibly be bored by my stories. Mr. Sancho, I insist. I insist in the opposite direction. 
I put my gun on the table and have it pointed towards Sancha. Are you sure? He's a nice gun. Yeah. I am sure it's a nice gun. Can stir better. Don't you that one. <laughs> That's a nice gun. <laughs> Can Sorbetta see this nonsense going on? <laughs> yeah, you can see it. I'm just going to tap Diego on the shoulder with, with my mage hand to try and trick him to going the other direction. <laughs> see, <laughs> see who tapped him. <laughs> the fight uh, works. Roll sleight of hand or arcana, I guess. <laughs> like whatever. Or occult. You, you use occult, don't you? Like you use occult, yes. Yeah, yeah you can use occult for that. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you tapped Tartuccio. Oh, Who fuck. is touching me? <laughs> 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 he just thinks it's the egg or something. <laughs> you, sir, are the most unpleasant, annoying, and then you hear the trumpets. <laughs> <laughs> I tried, Rasheen. <laughs> <laughs> the heralds or whatever announce Queen Germandi Aldore and Mayor Iosif Salemis. All rise as all the adventurers at various tables rise. A striking uh, half-elf <laughs> striking half-elf woman enters the hall, followed by an aristocratic middle-aged human man. The woman appears dressed for battle. She wears a fine leather coat over a sparkling male shirt. At her waist hangs an Aldori dueling sword. The two make their way to the head table where they remain standing. The man speaks first. Greetings, heroes. I am Iosef Selimus, Lord Mayor of Restoff. And this, he gestures to the woman beside him, is Queen Jamandi. Jamandi Aldori. <laughs> <laughs> like he's reading a paper. Jamandi or something. <laughs> <laughs> we both thank you for answering the call for heroes. You may be few, but we need only the best for this great task. And this guy, <laughs> Tartuccio points to Diego. <laughs> and the, Diego doesn't even take us an insult. He's like, "Yes, and me, Diego de Mingo de la Sancha. <laughs> Feel me if you dare." You know what? I'll, I'll, just I'll... rubbing his temple. <laughs> <laughs> it's annoying, Tartuccio. <laughs> <laughs> Tartuccio is just having the worst <laughs> night. <laughs> yes, I, I also says, <clears throat> and you. Diego de <laughs> <laughs> That's one. What I mean. yes. <laughs> if you have enough courage to drive off the dangerous denizens of the stolen lands, you can seize territory for yourselves and name yourself Baroness or Baron. Or actually King or Queen, depends. Restov intends to recognize the legitimacy of new rulers of this land, and none of the other neighboring realms are care, care enough to challenge you. <laughs> <laughs> we are prepared to provide backing as trade partners and military ally if you claim the land. You will have my, and indeed, all of Restov's support. Queen Aldori, I'm just gonna go with that, raises her goblet. But the details of your individual missions and charters into the Stolen Lands can wait. I raise my glass to you, brave heroes. For now, let us eat and enjoy the evening. Tomorrow promises a very busy day. And with that, a bunch of servants on cue just emerge from the east and west wings and bring out like a giant smorgasbord of food. And this is the point where I said you can go ahead and choose a meal to eat that is level six and below. Obviously, I'll start off with dessert and have some cake. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I managed my own heart. I'm going to start with dessert and have some pie. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, you could choose ASMR hair pasta, ghost fire roasted peppers, good berry pie, rock omelets, tiefling food cake, and sundari pizza. <laughs> or if you want the kingmaker food, there's baked spider legs, broiled. That's oysters. a good berry pie. I guess we're also all the dessert. <laughs> yeah, y'all just like d diving into. You know what? I, I think as like scrappy, nothing adventurers that don't really have a reputation yet, I think you guys would probably just dive into the sugar because it's so rare. Well, I mean, yeah, it's no, been a while since I've had something this good. Yeah, no, it's like all of these things are like, oh, savory, savory. Ooh, we don't get to have that often. And then we'll just balance it out with whatever the f that is over there. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Meanwhile, you guys see me get brought out a single fish on a stick. 
<laughs> yes, someone went with the fish on a stick. Fish on a stick. Now, to those yeah. who need hit points, you can recover 2d8 plus 5. Fantastic. Now is the time. Um, so, Diego. <laughs> Diego, as you're picking your meal, you notice Tartuccio is gone. <laughs> But Miss Abs over here has shown up. <laughs> so, would you you killed twenty ninjas? I killed three giants. I killed twenty ninja giants. <laughs> <laughs> roll. It was amazing. <laughs> I, I will let you decide what you want to roll for that. You can roll intimidation. Deception. Deception. Deception would be fine. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Deception is fine. She goes, oh, yeah? Well, I'm from the northern mountains where we run into frost giants all the time, and I guarantee none of them are trained in ninja, as you say. <laughs> well, you must not live, of course, in the south, where we run into giant ninjas all the time. In fact, this belt I wear is a belt of a ninja, a ninja giant that once trained me when I was a wee... a moment ni monito. <laughs> She's like, oh, yeah? Okay, you know what? Let's see how strong you are. She puts an arm on the table, and she'll put, like, her cake behind her so that if you KO her, you ruin her dinner. <laughs> and you two have fun with that. I'm going to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to leave. <laughs> of course, Leo goes, a, a gentleman never duels a lady. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm just pressing all the buttons tonight, okay? <laughs> you are absolutely, like, going out of your way. Hold on. Will that immediately offend her? I'm actually going to let you roll diplomacy on that because you're not being sexist. You're being polite, which which honestly works on her. It, 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 it fits with his character. He's like, a gentleman never do as a lady. Eight. <laughs> Oh, she said, oh, well, you know, if I beat you, then that just means you're a little girl. Uh, I am Diego de Domingo de la Sancha. I am not a little girl. <laughs> I don't know. A little girl won't be able to arm wrestle. You cannot prove this? Well, where I come from, and she's explaining, uh, like, you two are basically getting into a bragging match, and that's going to be the <laughs> whole, like, your whole <laughs> round is trying to out-brag each other. <laughs> Rasheen, you've gotten up to move. Where would you like to go? I'm going to go up, up, up. Over Wait, here. You... Over here. <laughs> up, up. And go over here. You approach Iosef, who stands up and shakes her hand like an old friend. My lord. He says, oh, Rasheen, how was your pilgrimage? I'm doing just fine, my lord. I'm just come, wanted to come up here and show my dearest respects to you. He says, well, I, it's good to see you again, as he shakes your hand and says, I haven't seen our protector in quite some time. Have you spoken to him yet? I have not. I thought he was going to be here. I, so, well, after, um, after Edwin and Doc Cobb showed up, um, they went to go see him, and I suspect uh, whatever they were researching. Did you purposely team up with them in order to uh, come home? That might have been one thing, but I do think that the people that I teamed up with are much more capable than some of the others, especially the one with the big head. Well, when you put out the call to adventure, you get, uh, well, adventurers, and he just kind of gestures to everyone in the hall. I also do think that the group that I found are very well balanced in terms of how they will support each other throughout the time. And if you would, could you kindly point me out to your group? And essentially this round for you will be introducing your new party to Iosef. If you want, you can give me a kind of check to try to impress upon him uh, or get something out of him. I'll use uh, society. Okay. Oh! Nat 20! Oh, shit! <laughs> All right, so yeah, you talk up your party very well. He's especially impressed. Diego, he's like, I've heard of that man. I've heard, <laughs> oh, no. I've heard mixed things oh, about Lord. that man. <laughs> <laughs> Is is he um all that the legends say? <laughs> he chooses his words very <laughs> politically. 
From what I have seen firsthand, he seems to be better than the legends say. <laughs> I, I've heard quite a few legends. He starts nervously <laughs> like, quite, cutting I, into his chicken. <laughs> I had a number of things. <laughs> he is a fantastic swordsman. If that's the case, might I recommend, and he points out to the halfling over here. Mm -hmm. says, might I recommend speaking with Lindsay? She is the one that's going to be chronicling the epic, as it were. Oh, I shall indeed take some time to speak to Lindsay then. You speak about Matherson, and Iosef has never heard of Matherson, but he's quite, like, fascinated <laughs> by essentially, you know, his lineage at this point. It's like, really, an Ifrit, huh? <laughs> Yes, no, I and love I... that because no one should really know of Matheson, but very particular people should. <laughs> it's that kind of deal. Yeah. I personally think he'll be the leader of the group in the long run. Excellent, excellent. And then I see you brought a frost demon. Do you know which family he's, he belongs to? I believe he's part of the Hagendaz family. He, he, I also gives a sigh the one on the Council of Mortals. And Rasheen, you do confirm that now. In indeed, sir. You've brought an interesting group. The whole reason, well, we can talk later, but uh, thank you for coming up and seeing me. It's good to see you. Good to see you too, old friend. Right. Matherson, what you doing, buddy? Well, I assume I've been doing small talk with people at the table. Uh, I assume the halfling is probably speaking up more than others, but due to how he works, he's probably keeping an ear open to just things going on, because it's always good to be in the know. Okay, that would be a quick perception check then. Um, All if, right. If you'd like to know what's going on. Well, that's 15. That's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah, yeah. So, that's what I said. So around you, there's a whole bunch of adventurers, and pretty much, like, it's as you'd expect. Each one of them is, like, talking up their own legend, and they're all green behind the ears. There's holes in their stories. They're all just kind of idiots. And mm. the only one with any kind of brain at the table is the halfling with the giant book, like, that's taking up half of her placemat, you know? And she's, mm. like, taking notes. And you notice that she started to draw you, actually. She's got this cute little drawing of you in her book. I just could just smile because I assume he's been doing that wonderful thing you can do in social situations when like somebody's telling a story and you're just oh yes and oh great he hits but so just keeps them talking so he never talks about himself yeah no you're, you're... That kind of thing. and he'll look over to the gnome or the, no sorry to the it's a halfling correct I believe she is I, I will triple yeah. check um, you know just smile and just go you're getting great aim. oh my god you know I'll give you a plus three for that if you roll a diplomacy that's that's really oh my god she's like oh <laughs> and she just kind of giggles like a like a schoolgirl at that one and she's like well i i mean your hair is very tricky i know it just never seems to stay in the right shape she gives a very cute smile at that and she's writing down like everyone's stories and she notices it's like so um you sir have not been speaking much at all but you've been getting people to talk what what, what, tell, what what's your group doing here well we were offered quite a, a potential source of a large amount of money and you know as adventurers it's always good to be chasing the coin now isn't it she goes, oh, yes, every every great event. There are so many kings and lords that started off as, like, <laughs> bandits and cutthroats that either got lucky or got smart. And I think it's quite, I mean, you'd be surprised who you can come up with. But um, yeah, your friend over there, as Diego <laughs> and Amiri, are just like, yeah, well, my, my, they had key powers and they were throwing oh. Kamehameha's. <laughs> well, wait till you have what you see, what I have in mind for when you come back to us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, as you said, uh, you need to be either smart or lucky, and he's you know, a bit of the luck in the group we're hoping. <laughs> Definitely not part of the smart. <laughs> Yes, but I've I've heard of Diego. I actually and she like takes a giant <laughs> on on over to like a like a subsection in her book. He said he's a local hero in several small towns. Oh, I bet. 
I started keeping score of the ones that are most likely and least likely, and God, the ones that are least likely, I really hope are least likely. <laughs> <laughs> and what's your story? I mean, obviously, other than the one you're writing. <laughs> you're so funny. Um, I'm working on my thesis. About? Well, I'm 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 writing the epic of uh, the Kingmaker story, and she holds up her giant notebook, and it says Kingmaker written on top of it, and <laughs> it's it's got like all the calligraphy <clears throat> of the adventure path. It's very meta. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> so, hold on. If you're going to be making the epic of this Kingmaker story, does that mean you're going to be traveling to all these different lands? That um, he looks around at all the adventurers and kind of checks at the tables that everyone will be traveling to in these uh, stolen lands. Is that correct? Well, um, yes. I, I have my assignments, and I'll be going in and checking up, and essentially uh, my job is to report back to Queen Aldori and, of course, the um, protector. Mm, well, I do hope that when you travel through, I guess, our land, uh, that you'll bring along some great Wonderful stories for me to listen to over an evening. Does that sound uh, preferable? There is no audible, but she audibly blushes at that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she just looks down at her book. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. It'll be great to hear what's going on. <laughs> Inserting later to just get bonuses for like finding out information of nearby lands. Yeah, she, <laughs> she is like she is just twirling her hair like like you absolutely charmed the f out of her. That was really good. <laughs> <laughs> Marquis, so you are surrounded by a elven woman, a a dwarf that seems more interested in listening or prattling on about doom and gloom a very beautiful human woman and uh, <laughs> unfortunately Tartuccio <laughs> who I'm just going to say you overheard his name <laughs> yep. and he's like oh finally now I can start talking about my grand plans and I I've noticed good sir as he looks at Marquis Sorbet he says I hope I can see you coming on to my team I, I don't suppose you want to stick around with that much longer. He points at Diego. <laughs> that has its uses. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, you know, it's either the smartest or the luckiest. And unfortunately for you, I am the smartest. I'm going to raise one eyebrow at that. You can choose whomever you wish to talk to, observe, you know. whatever. Yeah. Uh... One thing I actually want to do, mm -hmm. I want to look over and use Underworld lore to see if anyone here might uh, swim in the same circles as uh, my family, as it were. Okay. 18. Underworld, okay. There's a woman next to you. She is unusually pale and very, very quiet. But every time, like, either you or Tartuccio speak up, essentially this woman right here. Mm -hmm. Um, she, like, leans in, and you can tell that there's something about her. Like, she's, like, she's paying attention too closely, and she's eyeballing you every time you speak, just trying to, like, figure out what's going on. Frost demons are very, very rare in this world, and you think she's on to either what you are or where you come from. Okay. If you'll allow me... Mm -hmm. I am going to, because one thing with psychics, mm -hmm. uh, any spell that has a verbal component doesn't. It instead becomes a mental component, allowing me to cast spells completely silently. Okay. One thing about the message spell, it only has a verbal component. Interesting. So I can do it with no outward tells. Okay. The one thing so, I the one thing yep. I am supposed to tell you because yep, you su yep. you succeeded what's called a discovery check is okay. you can tell what she would want to talk about. Okay. So, you notice upon her she wears a symbol of a goddess called Urgatha or Urgathoa, Urgathoa. So, essentially religion is the way to get her to loosen up. That is what you've okay. learned. That is what you've learned. Yeah. Okay. So what message would you like to send her? So I'm just going to send her, you seem awfully interested 
in myself. Is there anything you want to know? I prefer not telling everyone around me, especially the gnome. Her ears kind of perk up. She then looks at you and kind of gives a nod. And she just cautiously gets into her vegetables or whatever at her mm -hmm. table. And she's like, so, uh, good sir, where are you from? We ever actually, I don't think we ever actually gave where I'm from a name. We have not. <laughs> Your, your brother is on the Council of Mortals, so he's from this country. He's just from a different kingdom, and we can just kind of make mm. it up. So, okay. we can. You guys are from the kingdom of ice in the land of cream. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> the strawberry region. The straw... St okay, so we need a... God damn it, that's funny. <laughs> um... Yeah, so far away, uh, land of ice. You must travel the rocky road. <laughs> <laughs> Along the rocky road, you will reach the kingdom of ice, the land of cream. So yeah, you know what? I think the kingdom of something, something ice. So <laughs> ice, uh, ice baby. We could, we could just cheap out and call it Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> it's surprisingly green. I know it's strange. Like, don't eat the yellow snow. Don't eat the yellow ice. It's dangerous. You know we're we're gonna go with Iceland for now. <laughs> That's fine. You're from Iceland. I, I, I am Iceland. awful with names, so that is fine for now. All right, you are from, I, from Iceland. <laughs> ice Iceberg. <laughs> iceberg. iceberg. That's I'm the, from the you know from what? Iceberg. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. The uh, the country, uh, the kingdom. Of La Creme, <laughs> the kingdom of La Creme, but every town has an ice theme to it, <laughs> like iceberg, ice, Iceland, uh, Iceland, and you try ice world. Rocky. Yeah, you're from the kingdom of La Creme. Okay, let's see if she actually knows like what that is, because she may not know. Interesting. Okay, she goes ah. Do you have family there? As she just kind of eyes. Yes, although I'm not sure how pleasant a reunion would be at this moment. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, dabble in politics much, she asks. <laughs> to some extent, perhaps. Interesting. I... I left the politics of my land some time ago. It's, uh, it was rather awkward. <laughs> I suppose you could understand. She, like, nudges, like, sh like, slyly. Yep. Yeah, you, oh, you two are boy. absolutely on to each other. <laughs> like, yep. <laughs> and where, do you, where perchance do you hail from? Since you told me, it's only polite. I am from Keonan. Uh, she is from the land of elves. J. Fall was a lot of fun. Yeah, she she's really cool in this one. I, I like what they did, and, and I like what Paizo actually did. Um, <laughs> she said, I, uh, due to an awkward, um, let's call it situation, I left my home and uh, decided to seek my fortunes here in, in Restov. Lo and behold, it seems that uh, they do have need of experts of my, my status. So it would appear. Sir Betta raises his glass to her. To unfortunate circumstances and interesting opportunities. She will she will cling your glass. Oh, that's that was awesome. I like that. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Diego! <laughs> <laughs> Let's come back to him and going, yes. 100 sit-ups, 100 push-ups. 100 squats in a 10 kilometer run. Of course, all followed up with an hour of flamenco. And that is my workout routine. And this is switching workout routines. I, I, you know what? That's awesome. Roll roll your best physical stat. Roll your best physical stat. I like that. Uh, the... She's like, oh, yeah, well, screw you. I'm going to do 101. 
Okay. <laughs> I'm going to do 101 sit-ups. And then she she comes back in. And it's like, 100 is 10 tens, right? Uh, I believe so, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, you know, a swordsman is only as good as their sword. And she finally like, addresses the elephant on her back. <laughs> and she's got a huge honkin' stonkin' sword. <laughs> it's... It's not the size that counts. It's how you use it. <laughs> you know it's what? How she's, you use it. <laughs> she's, yeah, but uh, you know, a lot of small men say that. But you don't seem like a small man. You're all right, Diego. She punches you rather hard in the arm. You're right too, uh, uh, Lady Amiri. And, and then he just bows. He gives like a little compliment and puts up his fist for a bro fist. <laughs> she absolutely just punches it, like, as hard as she can. <laughs> like, she does not understand the nuance of the bro fist. <laughs> and Diego just, like, he waves his head, like, in pain, was like, ah, you are a woman of much gusto. I respect this. Cheers! And he, he, he raises a glass. And he goes, yeah, you're right, you're good, you're cool. Way better than the dudes in my tribe. They f suck. <laughs> and she'll, like, hit your glass with a sandwich. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I like the yogurt, like, imagine, so he goes, of course they do. They are not me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Our tribe could use more gentlemen like you. You ever heard of the six bears? <laughs> <laughs> and then she goes on to tell you more stories about how all of her brothers would go out and hunt one elk. And she's like, I'd come back with two elks just to show them. <laughs> one night I came back with three elks and they were all ninjas. <laughs> Man, where you come from, you must have a real ninja problem. I envy <laughs> you and your ninja problem. If only I could fight ninjas this often. <laughs> they just both believe each other. <laughs> <laughs> I am just absolutely giving you free influence points with her. <laughs> That's funny. Matherson, throughout the next, like, you know, 10, 20 minutes of evening time, you have once again been just sorting through everyone around you. If you would like, would you like to gather information or continue to chat up Lindsay? Well, I should think that with how I should move, it'd probably be best to come in to move into this area and see about these other two. And, you know, he, he would, you know, talk to Lindsay, but I think it might be good for me to uh, taste the delicacies at some of the other tables. You know, both food and uh, people. She looks a little disappointed, but then she realizes, oh, you're gathering information. You're so smart. <laughs> she points. Just taps on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> she points to this guy over here. That man is actually a noble. You might want to go ahead and talk to him. See if you can sub secure some funding and an alliance. All right. And then who's the other uh, roguish gentleman? This Rough, one? I should say. Yes. Oh, that's Harem. He's, um, he's nice. Little, little, <laughs> little down on himself and everyone. He, he worships Grotus. And if you want to talk to him, um, don't, don't go with a chipper attitude. He's just going to bring you down. I will keep that in mind. Don't worry. I've had to deal with a lot of disappointment. Yep. So, you know, not... <laughs> <laughs> I got it. You know not to talk to Harem with a chipper attitude, essentially. That is actually super duper important. <laughs> and then the noble was named? Magar Varn. Magar Varn. Okay. Yeah, I love these <laughs> names, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is They're fun. Called? It's like it's a randomizer. Who knew? <laughs> it's a random name generator. Also, I like the idea of someone looks over to Diego and Amira at one point. They're just showing off each other's abs. And then like, Diego's looking defeated, obviously. <laughs> obviously. Because <laughs> that's her whole personality. <laughs> there's, there's, there's comparing abs and Diego's like, ah. Oh. <laughs> Don't worry, you could do that. Listen, all you got to do is 102 sit-ups. 102 sit-ups. <laughs> 102 sit-ups. It's, it's the last two sit-ups that really matter. I should have accomplished this. <laughs> but you gotta really squeeze them out. <laughs> <laughs> squeeze, 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 squeeze. <laughs> there, you're getting it, you're getting it. <laughs> also, can, can I roll society? Yeah, you can roll society. All right. Can I know, do I know who Tartuccio is now? You know that he... Oh, you, you want to... <laughs> No, <laughs> oh no! Like, 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 all, all of a sudden, like, he's talking to Amira, 
and they're comparing abs and just like exchanging workout routines. And all of a sudden, Dio goes, he just slams the table and goes, Tatushio, that's it. <laughs> that was your name. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I heard he, this theme before. he reaches out to Marquis and he's like, all right, pleasure doing business with you. I will. Uh, here's my card. And uh, I need to go. I need to go hire uh, that gentleman over there. <laughs> I am away. <laughs> Have fun. Looking? Good luck. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I knew I heard this name. <laughs> he just runs away. <laughs> no, I just love that. Because to, to do she walks up to Madison and go. I will tell you, he's like a curse. You can't escape. <laughs> but it's a good, he's putting a good. very good effort in trying. He looks at Matherson and says, you seem like a man with a brain. <laughs> You'd be correct in that, but that's a low bar to have to sit. He looks over at Diego. Still comparing abs see? with me. <laughs> <laughs> Still comparing abs. <laughs> or maybe they're done to comparing biceps now. So she has better biceps, but you have better triceps. No, they're. I'm <laughs> 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 just they're trying, which means they're better. They're one down. better, clearly. After <laughs> a certain point, it's like, no, it wasn't the wine. It was the conversation. <laughs> so, Matheson, now that you are here, yeah. you are with Tartuccio, Harim, and Lord Varn. What would you like to do? Well, I think if anything, we should be speaking uh, more to the noble first. Probably be good to go from the top down and uh, sour my mood more as it goes. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the row of unpleasantness that you walked into. <laughs> no, 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 but that's planned. <laughs> that's planned. Okay. Yeah. No, oh, yes, the noble. Oh, yes, that. Mm, the, noble. the other noble. <laughs> hey, hey, I am using the information that the halfling graciously bestowed upon me. So you're, you're talking to the noble. Essentially, you're going to have to give me a check. Like, what are you going to talk to him about? Are you making an impression? Are you trying to, like, gather information? Are you trying to, like, what are you trying to do? Well, I mean, at the moment, it would probably be, I have just sat down. Let's do the impression. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, no, you sit down with, like, all the grace and charm that you normally have. And Harim says, welcome to your inevitable end. It's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> Tartuccio <laughs> says, yeah, man, welcome welcome to, you know, my table. And Lord Varn gives you a polite nod. Says, you have an interesting group. <laughs> well, yes. Thank you for your politeness. <laughs> With that joke, the four of you raise a glass <laughs> as to, like... <laughs> <laughs> to the understanding of what that just meant. <laughs> you get a point to each of them. <laughs> Rasheen, what would you like to do? Now that you've greeted your good friend, Iosef. I shall now take my leave, Iosef. So of course, of course, go eat. Eat something. You're so skinny. Do, do your people, do you people get fat? If I knew, I would like to know, but I do not know. Go, go eat something. I know you do You do like your sweets, and we made sure to have plenty of sweets here. All right, Rasheen, where are you going? I'm actually going to go over to this fine gentleman over here, because no one has seemed to talk to you, good sir. Ah, that nat 20 you had earlier lets you know that this is Hanis uh, Drelev, and uh, you do in fact know that he is a baron in this country, because I'm like, oh my god, I can't find From somewhere. Him. From somewhere. He's a baron, but he doesn't like to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, let's just go with that. <laughs> anyway, you approach Hannes. What would you like to do? Are you making an impression? What you doing? I'm going to talk it up and try to make a good first impression for our group. Okay. Hello there, Baron Drelev. Was not expecting to see someone of your caliber out here. He's rather taken aback by that. He says, oh, well, I am, I am the Baron of some kingdom. <laughs> he says, and well, my reputation does precede me, I suppose. I did have to fight tooth and claw for my position, but uh, I thank you for recognizing what clearly is talent. I'm curious about your friends. They are, well, the one is quite loud, is he not? I've noticed that after the two days of knowing him. Two days, you say? 
notice you shaking hands with the Lord Mayor. How do you know him? And why don't I know you? I have been a servant to a lot of Lord Mayors over the time. I see, I see. And what the f*** does that mean? <laughs> As in, his great-grandfather I raised when he was a kid. He's taking it back. He says, how, how old are you? I don't know. I've forgotten because of how long it's been. And some of the previous masters and mistresses were not too kind to my mentality. He starts looking you up and down. And says, so you've served many, many lords, you say. And you've raised some... How attached are you to your crew? I have just started to know them. Well, after we get our missive, we're going to head out to a certain specific land, and I can tell that you can clearly handle yourself. How would you like to come work for me? Unfortunately, Baron Delev, I would have to politely decline due to a previous engagement with my current Lord Mayor. Then I'm afraid you are simply wasting my time, and I'm going to ask you to get the f*** away from my table. As you wish, Lord Baron, I did not mean to mean any rudeness to you. He says, well, I suppose uh, a long life can lead to a shortened wick. But uh, thank you for stopping by, and again, the offer is open. I have, well many resources at my back indeed and if for some reason we ever come across again and you, that you need my assistance if i'm free i will gladly assist you my bear he gives a polite bow uh give me diplomacy i'll lower the dc for you because you made a decent impression <laughs> what <laughs> natural 20 <laughs> the second one in a row i Okay. Rasheem, like, just going at it with the f <laughs> the high- He goes straight for the high rolling table. We're about to call you the gambler. Jesus. <laughs> All right. More time has passed, and you've gotten to know your table mates a bit. I will say that, Sorbetta, you have learned that your neighbor is named Jathal, and the other, well, frankly, only person worth your time is Valerie across from you. If you want, you can pursue information with either one of them, but Jathal seems to, like, really be enjoying the conversation. Okay. Can I roll re religion just so I... Yes. Sorbetta knows what Urgathawa is? Yeah. Eh, Oof, or not. That's rough. <laughs> that's with a plus four, damn it. <laughs> You've heard of Urgath... Like, Ur Urgathoa? Urgathoa. Ur Urgathoa. Urgathoa. You know enough to know that she's not a well-thought-of god. In fact, most people don't even seem to openly worship her. But the fact that she's got a brooch, like, just here in in Great Messania of all places, where there's angels just hanging out, <laughs> that's f***ing <laughs> ballsy. Since I've been talking to Jathal, I'm just gonna question her. Did she come with, with anyone else in this lovely cacophony of a room she explains no i've actually i've been taking some solitary time for quite some time in fact this is my first time in a while being in a hall like this granted in kionin the halls were much bigger and surrounded by more refined guests she kind of eyes diego and amiri <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's still comparing other things <laughs> But, Just think of them as the entertainment. Oh no, I'm quite amused. They are very funny. <laughs> <laughs> the, the elves, they're fine people, but a bit, a bit of a, how do how do these people say it? Uh, brick up their ass a little bit. Ah, <laughs> uh, I, I don't think I've ever been in one quite so lavish as yours and your home, but I can. Definitely understand the sentiment. Well, if I recall, your land has very interesting weather patterns. You must use vastly different architecture. Kionin is full of things built into trees or, or 
vast buildings that are get drafty, but your land, much different. A drafty building would unfortunately most likely inconvenience any guests we had, yes. Interesting, interesting. So what what brought you and your <laughs> interesting companions into the hall? I received an invitation specifically from our mutual friend over there as she points to Tartuccio. <laughs> I considered going along with him for a time, but considering how quickly he, um, let's just say, lost his cool, she kind of nudges your frost demon <laughs> arm. <laughs> I'm beginning to reconsider. Wait a minute, so Diego messing with Tartuccio changed the aspect of where this was going? Yeah, because she was going to team up with Tartuccio, <laughs> but considering how embarrassed he was about the whole thing. <sighs> yes, I've only known Diego for a very short time. He does seem to have that effect on many people. Tell you what, if any man or if any group can weed out the unworthy and those who can't stomach any sort of mildly unpleasant conversation. They're not worth being being around. Raises glass at that. Having a certain amount of perseverance, as it were, is certainly a boon. Of course, of course. Um, yes. Um, you guys simply continue the conversation. Yep. You're not really talking about much. It's mostly small talk. So I will yeah. give you a bonus to diplomacy by uh, essentially lowering her influence requirement. Ah, well. Okay. You dance around the subject, but you don't address it directly. But the fact that she catches on that you caught on, mm -hmm. pretty good. Pretty good. Diego, you've now drawn a bit of a crowd <laughs> with Amiri. Your show of muscles and various <laughs> bullshit like, has started to get the other adventurers like, oh yeah, well then what'd you do next? And now Lindsay's like, they're chronicling. You are writing it all down. <laughs> she's ready. He's like, wait, wait, hold up. She's, she's actually stopping you for more details. How many ninjas? <laughs> 20 ninjas. And they're all giants. Because <laughs> last time you said 10 ninjas. I was mistaken. Sometimes I don't remember so well. He was 20. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> and, and what were they armed with? Did they did they have any kind of sigils or anything like that? She's, like, drilling you for details. <laughs> All 20 of them belong to the house of Kogaturatsu, a, a very famous house, actually, of, of ninja. It was very interesting. It goes into the history of... <laughs> Give me a bluff or deception. 15. Hold up. That... She says, uh -huh, I've, I've not heard of that house specifically, but, you know, the world is vast, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very vast. Uh, one thing I have learned in all of my adventures, the world is vast and beyond compare with anyone's imagination. <laughs> he tells her that they were ar armed with various ninja swords, you know. He describes a katana, but in his way. <laughs> like rapiers, but, but thick, extra thick. <laughs> folded over 10,000 times. <laughs> folded, each one folded over 10,000 times, but giant. I'm just picturing you just going, folded 20 times for each person in the group. <laughs> <laughs> 20 times for each person? <laughs> it was quite an adventure, yes. <laughs> All right, so she's writing this down. You can give me a, a, a perception check if you like. 14. Diego's tall tales are horseshit, but very fun. <laughs> she's a bard, so she's writing it like very poetically, like tall tales are legendary. He will make a great fairy tale writer someday or something like that. <laughs> They're as tall as the ninja giants he, he talks about. <laughs> exactly. So uh, this, is, uh, this is how his legend is made. He just tells all these stories. People just believe him sometimes. He actually does normal, th like some cool things where he just, you know, he builds them up. He, he, he embellishes. Oh, my God. <laughs> What is that? What was that for? Uh, no particular reason. And she's like, well, I'm most impressed by your charity work. And essentially, like, she's asking you to clarify the tales of your, like, stealing from the rich and giving to the needy sort of thing. Yeah, he says, says a tale of, like, one greedy lord who took momentous tax taxes from an orphanage, and he got it back. <laughs> the nuns are very happy. The and including the priest. The priest. And and what <laughs> what religion were they? You can, you can roll a religion check on this one. Eight. 
Oh, I'm not really a religion guy. There's so many. <laughs> <laughs> I was more concerned oh, who, about the... Who knows? Like, who knows about the religion? The religion? What, what is important is doing good. For the children. <laughs> For the children. <laughs> so brave. As Amiri's like, <laughs> you do all of your fighting for a purpose. That's fascinating. Do you ever fight for yourself? On occasion, I go back I'll go out to criminals. But sometimes criminals pay quite a bit. So it's a twofer. I fight for myself, and I fight to cleanse the world of ne'er-do-wells. <laughs> Amiri is writing this down, but of course she can't read or write, so she's just like scribbling. A bunch of scribbles. She's just scribbling. Like a, bunch of, like, like a bunch of like symbols and stuff like that. It's like her stick figure. <laughs> <laughs> and she like and and uh, does that give you bigger muscles? Uh, oh yes, it is quite the workout. <laughs> that, that she pays attention to. <laughs> Thrusting your sword in and out of a man's chest is quite the. <laughs> it works at the back of the arms very well. That's how he got it. And then all, <laughs> all of the other warriors at the table go, oh. <laughs> They're like, that switch to thrusting weapons. <laughs> all right, so you've, you've made quite an impression on the adventurers at your table. Matherson. Yes. Essentially, like, you've regained lost grounds that Diego lost because Diego is now entertained over here and not harassing poor Tabisio. <laughs> <laughs> Matheson, what would you like to do? Well, I think he'd want to, like I said, he wants to handle them from top to bottom if, if possible. So at first he'd be speaking to the noble, and you know. Okay, as far as I understand it, uh, we are to be uh, gaining lands if we can go take them, of course, with us different strengths as he's looking at the three men in front of him. But, uh, obviously, all of your endeavors will be successful, but it wouldn't help to be able to have, um, assistance in the future, yes? Diplomacy. He says, you know, it's, it's fascinating to me that you're here without really knowing why you're here, but you're still doing it. I admire that. Ah. Um, whether it be for greed or whatever, but I'm not here to make enemies. I think you have the correct idea in that we're all aiming to become lords and powerful kings. And, okay, it's a bit of a secret, but here's what I've heard. Would you like to know something? Oh, it's always good to be in the know, isn't it? He leans in and you, Tartuccio and Matherson, and Harem, I guess he Harem just kind of leans, but like Tartuccio is like really going in. <laughs> I heard that this whole kingmaker scheme is just a means in order for our lady queen up there to get on the Council of Mortals. If you would like, you could do a society check on that. All right, the Council of Mortals in this set, this is a stewardism, by the way. This is not Kingmaker itself. The Council of Mortals is a small group of kings that can actually answer directly to the god of this country and his Council of Angels. It's a very prestigious collection of people. It's very hard to get into, and you usually have to do it by doing some legendary deed. But how would the deeds of the ones that would be helping, you know, looks around the room, how would that lead to her doing something legendary. Well, her sponsoring the <clears throat> people who expanded the land of Great Messania, considering it hasn't been done in, well, hundreds of years, is quite a feat, wouldn't it be? True, but I could just give a quest for almost, you know, some kind of impossible task, and if enough people try it, maybe somebody would succeed. Yes, but do you have the literal thousands upon thousands of gold pieces to not only attract enough adventurers, get them to all agree to something, and then arm them, supply them, and then begin trade with a brand new budding country? Hmm, no, not personally. Yeah, my friend, you're very smart, but you need to know that even in Great Messania, where might usually can make right, you still need capital and gold. And our lady queen up there is no short of any of that. Yeah, I could see him smiling bigger at the capital and gold. Well, I guess that's our endeavors to go and uh, gather those two things on. He raises a glass to that. 
And Tartuccio is, of course, like, well, I know that I will be the greatest king out of all of you, of course, for I am Tartuccio, the <laughs> master wizard. <laughs> My notes for Tartuccio just says, Tartuccio, no, very full of himself. And I have not had a reason to change those notes. <laughs> nope. You... Oh, wait, sorry, you said wizard. There we go, we'll add that. <laughs> uh, mine just says, thinks he's the smartest man in the room. I was actually wrong. Uh, he's not a wizard, he's a sorcerer. But I think it's funnier that he messed that up. <laughs> I think it's... <laughs> then I will wizard. still keep wizard. <laughs> I am the greatest wizard in the room, of course. None of these folks know about the fineries of the arcane. As he takes a big old swig of wine. You're correct. Those things elude me completely. Harem leans down and goes, Oh, what do you know about the arcane? Can you tell us a, a magical secret? I don't just give those away for free! <laughs> but if you join my company... Well, to be fair, we did just get paid in a rumor. Isn't that right, uh, Magar? Magar. Magar. <laughs> Magar! <laughs> Do you see me wearing a red hat? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Not talking to you! <laughs> You're asleep, Rogar! <laughs> what was I at? Uh, sorry, Magar. Well, we were just paid in a rumor now, aren't we, Magar? Yes, and I suppose it would be the polite thing to do to repay that favor. Mm, okay, okay, secret, a magic secret that's really cool. Okay. Well, actually, I do have something for you, my friend. As leader of these fine gentlemen and, and Diego. <laughs> <laughs> and Diego. And Diego. I, the heroes of the realm and Diego. <laughs> I grant to you this magic shabalba as he pulls out a brooch. <laughs> this magical brooch will act as a shield against your enemies. Here yeah, for you, my friend. Since you're the one who managed to weasel it out of our Lord Varn over here. <laughs> oh. You mischaracterize my actions, of course. No, I it's, can... it's a dangerous task ahead of us, is it not? Being armed with everything you can is important. Of course, of course. That's why I feel like you should be armed with a magical shield. Take it, my friend. With this gift, I will accept great, graciously. You pick it up, and it is, in fact, a brooch that you can attach to your breast. And it's got an interesting herald on it. You don't recognize it right away, but you can recall with a society check. Okay, I will do that. Although at the same time, I do also have someone else I can call for this. So, Greta, <laughs> look at this yes. wonderful gift I was given from Tortushi. Wow, oh. a little bit better, but not by much. It's certainly a nice brooch. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> My man is sur surrounded by like beautiful women right now. He's he, mm -hmm. <laughs> even though like <laughs> frost demons don't really do that. <laughs> they could nope. Domingo's no way it is. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> So well you, Diego, you absolutely know what it is, but here like he, he's, he's in the corner of his eye. Like, oh yeah, one of those things. But but at the moment, Diego, you are distracted with your adoring crowd, who are now singing your theme song. <laughs> I'm the greatest fearless hero. <laughs> Lindsay's passed out sheet music. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just, like, just picturing. She like rolls her Madison, eyes and goes, ah, passing out sheet music. <laughs> I could bet that if Madison wanted to make some quick coin off of Tortuccio, he could just be like, would you like me to show you a great deal of mercantile ability? And he would just torture and be like, what? If you give me three gold, I will make sure that Diego's not bothering you for the rest of the year. <laughs> he looks at you, looks at Diego, looks at you, look at Diego. <laughs> Done. <laughs> He's, he slaps <laughs> three gold pieces on the table. Diego de la Sancha! You know, as he stands up, holding up a glass. Yes? Why don't you show these wonderful, strong adventurers your acrobatics? Although I do not think there's enough room here, but right outside, I think there was a courtyard, yes? Yes, perhaps later. Much later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, do you not all want to see it? <laughs> Jay Thal will turn around and so will that. Like, um, essentially, you, you now have all eyes on you from the room. 
And <laughs> Jay Thal will actually point out, I want to see the trick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, if I needed a diplomacy check for a group one. No, you got it. Like, you absolutely <laughs> got it. Do it on the tables. Jump from table to table as people are, like, making wild suggestions. Hang on the chandelier! <laughs> like, <laughs> So like the way the the range of I, influence I, I, that's happening right now is I, I rolled a fourteen athletics. So you know what? That's that's impressive enough. You've hopped on the table and you stepped in Amiri's cake, and she's like, "Oh, bro." <laughs> 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 but the rest of the adventurers are like clearing off their dishes as you begin to show off, essentially your boots. <laughs> Diego goes, "Don't worry, Amiri. It's it's cake. It is not meat." Meat is the only thing a true muscle-bound warrior should eat. Because protein. <laughs> she draws, like, a cartoon Flintstones meat on her, like, <laughs> tree bark that she's using as paper. Just turns back to Tortuccio and goes, I have the three gold for now, but... <laughs> there's no bothering at the end. Please do seek me out. Lord Vard, Tortuccio, and Harem all give you polite, like, golf claps for just handling that. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you need to be able to know the different people you work with. It was impressive, was it not, Tortuccio? <laughs> <laughs> he told me he wouldn't address me. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm surprised he's able to hear it over all of this. Because I know who he is, remember? I rolled 21 in society. Oh my god, that's right, you did. <laughs> and yeah, so essentially, thanks to Diego, everyone knows that he is from Patax. And that 20 and Rasheen's nat 20 from earlier, Patax it has a very nasty rivalry with this particular kingdom, with uh, Restov, and specifically the kingdom of Bavoy. So Matherson and Rasheen, actually... Rasheen, if you're coming down this way, um, you know that there's a Pataxi in here. Uh, essentially, it's Rasheen's turn, and I'm asking what he would like to do. I'd like to go down and sit right here and talk to the lovely lady next to me. She looks you up and down and recognizes you right away, actually. She's like, you're a Majin. Indeed I am. I, uh, I, I recognize you, uh, or at least... Uh, you're kind, but you're different from the other ones I've seen. How, how do I know your face? Let's see. You might have seen me with multiple lords and, and mistresses, for I have been servants to many of them over the years. You can do a society check to see if you okay. know her, because she actually knows many lords and ladies. <laughs> hey, how? Impossible! Is it? Oh my god, you did it again. You recognize her from a temple of Shaylin you once stayed at. She was a paladin in training who left. In fact, she was quite revered at this temple because Shaylin worshippers worship beauty, and she was literally the most beautiful creature there. She left the temple at vi for under very awkward conditions, so you know how to dance around uh, essentially addressing it. I think I... I think I recognize your face. Were you, at one point, training at a, a... to be a paladin? I do not recall which deity, but I do recall you, you at a, a paladin training place. Her eyes widen as she's like, You're a machine! I am. Goodness, I haven't seen you in quite some time. Yes, I remember the, uh, the uh, sir, sir, and, well, I, I don't like thinking about them. But no, it's it's uh, great to see you again, as she offers you a handshake. Gladly accepts it. It gives a nice firm handshake back. Yes, I, I quite remember. Ladies and uh, paladins all spoke quite highly of you. You are a noble creature, at least according to reputation. What are you doing here? And, um... Excuse me, uh, 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 pardon uh, my, pardon the rudeness, but what are you doing with this group? As uh, she kind of talks to Sorbet <laughs> as she says this. Oh, no offense to oh, Sorbet. Sorbet over here, as I'm not addressing you, Diego. <laughs> <laughs> you used to rub shoulders with noble paladins and great lords. Yes, uh, rub shoulders, that's... 
quite funny for to say to a low servant as myself. She kind of dismisses that. It says, you, your reputation precedes you. You are quite humble. Please, if you need anything. In fact, I... She thinks for a moment. I have not chosen an adventuring party yet, but I remember the priest speaking quite highly of you. And if you are with that troop, uh, it would be an honor if I could join you. I would gladly accept if I was one that is going to be leading the group. That would actually be the nice man over there with the flaming hair, Mr. Doyle. She looks up at Matheson, who is expertly negotiating between three surprisingly difficult characters. <laughs> I lean in to whisper, you gotta admit, I know how to choose the person that would lead this group. Her eyes widen. Of course. And she gives, like, a warrior salute. This is, uh, of course, uh, please. Uh, well, the meal's almost over, but thank you. Pleasure seeing you again. Alrighty. Now, according to this, you get three rounds to talk to everybody. So, what I will allow you guys to do is to leave final impressions before the meal is over and you are excused to rooms. Each adventuring party has been given exclusive rooms in the east or west wings and you're about to be escorted to your particular zone. So, Matherson, is there any closing statements you would like to give to your new friends? Oh, gentlemen, it has been a pleasure of a sort. I do hope that... Uh... You've had a mixed impression of our group. Though, uh, hopefully, at some point, Haram, I would like to discuss this. Well, just as this meal is coming to, the end you had spoken of. If you can <laughs> find the time. Give me one last diplomacy, three of them. One off from a nat 20. That's because weird. Rasheen's stealing them all! <laughs> hey, before Haram can speak, Tartuccio like slaps his beard and says, nah, uh, uh, not today, sir. You're not taking my recruit. Harim has already agreed to come with me to the bitter end, right, Harim? <laughs> and she kind of like elbows him in the ribs. <laughs> and Harim bows, yes, I did already make an agreement. But agreements are kind of meaningless, don't you think? Depends upon the situation now, doesn't it? Tartuccio says, no, nope, we've already discussed this. You're with me, Harim. Sorry, Matherson. But I do wish you the best of luck. And when I become, you know, part of the Council of Mortals, and indubitably, of course. Of course. I hope that we can be fast friends. We will see how the future unfolds. Here's hoping. And he just gives him a big smile. So you left a very good impression on Harim, especially because you talked about gloom and doom, like at the very end there. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I hope your end is swift and not unpleasant. <laughs> and doesn't come soon. Don't we all. <laughs> Lord Varn uh, excuses himself from the table, gives you a polite bow, but he will actually, I believe he leaves the mansion and he has his own place to go to. So he will be leaving. Tartuccio will just saunter off into the West Wing. And Harim, I believe, heads to the East Wing. Marquis Sorbetta, would you like to make any lasting impressions on your nearby friends? Uh, yes, I'm going to turn to Jethal. It has been a rare and genuine pleasure talking to you tonight. She smiles and she says, yes, I... I hope we can speak again in the morning. I believe I would like to change my missive as well. As she reaches into her pockets, I'm not good at sentiment, but here. Hopefully it's better for you than for me. She gives you a small scroll. Ooh. That is a scroll of restoration. Uh, second, okay. level, second level, actually. Hopefully I will see you in the morning. And uh, hopefully we'll have a lot more to discuss. But it is late, and even even my people need to rest. <laughs> God's willing. And he will use message to say this one on your head again, not to 
draw too much attention to, to what she's wearing. Uh, I'm just going to roll religion to, uh, to like a proper Gathawin goodbye. Okay. You absolutely <laughs> meet the requirements. She is taken aback and like shocked, but gives a beaming smile and not skips off, but like it's noticeably girly for as serious as she was. She'll head off to the West uh -huh. Wing. Rasheen, I will let you go ahead and say goodbye to your friend if you would like, leaving any lasting impressions. I do hopefully look forward to our future companionship later on. Roll diplomacy. I swear to God. I swear to God. <laughs> come on. Come on. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> Not an actuality. <laughs> <laughs> That's still really- you rolled an 18! Hold on, is that enough for her? I, I think it is. Diplo her diplomacy check was 19. Wow. She's like, you know what? T to show you how serious I am about following you and your leader. Here. She reaches into uh, her pouch and politely, like with both hands, like very Japanese, you know what I mean? She mm -hmm. hands you a vial. And it is a moderate juggernaut mutagen. Wait, what? <laughs> I, I, it's, it's what it says she gives you if you make a really good impression. And by God, did you? Oh, this is a gracious gift to show your faith in me. I shall gladly use it on either myself or any of our allies when the time comes. She smiles and says, it's, uh, it's an honor and she will head off to her wing. And then Diego, you've gotten a little bored because uh, people are leaving and not paying attention to you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what are you doing? It is late. <laughs> he's quieting down. He's, he's, he's still like high on it. He's just, just drinking with, I guess, Amiri. And I guess Lindsay is still there. I think so, yeah. Like you made an impression basically on all the girls i'm just I'm now realizing <laughs> like all the girls except for valerie she's which is ironic <laughs> considering <laughs> like jay thaw was amused by your antics Lindsay, although she knows you're full of shit <laughs> like was <Still> amusing <laughs> was amusing and amiri just full bought it full on bought it just getting late ladies i must unfortunately go to my room and get some rest good heroes need good rest and good muscles, of course, also need good rest. Uh, but it was a pleasure dining with you both. Lindsay, it's like, I, I like that. She's, uh, she writes down your last words for the evening and says, and thus ends the banquet of the heroes. And she gently closes her book, scoots off, and begins to walk to the West Wing. Amiri, like... You know that thing MMA fighters do before they're about to fight, where they, <laughs> they cross their arms and drink their protein shakes? Oh. That's what Amiri's offering. You're not sure what she's <laughs> drinking. As you guys take a swig, she refuses to let go, and then goes to her belt, and then whips out a dagger. <laughs> and then places it in your other hand, and says, Tell you what, kill something bigger than a giant ninja one day with that dagger for me. I will do my best endeavor to do so. Thank you, young lady. Your she, beauty has been quite the feast upon my eyes this evening. I'll let you do diplomacy. He's not impressed by that, but you've been such a gentleman that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a natural one. Ooh. <laughs> She's like, eh. No, not natural. It's a two. It's a two. It's a two. <laughs> two. She's like, stick, stick, stick to killing ninjas, bud. <laughs> 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 I look at the largest ninja I have ever seen. Yeah, she hands you a plus one dagger. Oh, nice. Yeah, dude. I like those. That's like the best gift in the house. It's crazy. <laughs> All right, so you've made your impression on the various people, and I think Amiri goes this way. You guys are gathered up, and you are also escorted to the West Wing for the evening. You have been invited to stay. Naturally, I'm going to assume that your group does. Because, you know, they promise you your missive in the morning. And essentially, Rashim, before you leave, Lady Aldori and Iosif approach you for a second. like, And they're like, okay, we don't have a missive for you yet, but we're going to work something out real fast. Matheson, I, you've, been, you've been invited to the conversation, too. It's a pleasure to meet you both. Sorry we didn't get to chat at all during this. 
Queen Aldori just shakes your hand strongly but firmly, and she says, any friend of Rasheen is a friend of ours. Wonderful. Thank you, Rasheen. Of course. You made a great impression on me five days ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, I seem to do that wherever I go. Not unlike Diego, apparently. I still can't believe that we met him two days ago and he made that much of a pressure on you. Dude, I'm just living rent for you in one's head. Like, even he even when know, he's not there, he's just having a conversation. <laughs> Sorry, did like I move? Like an sort of axe that? into a dry tree. He's, he's, he's keeping space between himself and Diego. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are escorted to East Wing, essentially blah, 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 blah. You are escorted to a room to the far eastern side. It is a simple room, clearly made for adventuring guests or like guards or whatever, because there are four bunk beds on each <laughs> corner of the room. Rushing, so better. Uh, if you would please, uh, anything that we need to know of. Any information? Uh, is this the part where I, where I tell him about the brooch? That's the part where I like immediately yes. know what the brooch is. Yes. So he doesn't know right. what the brooch does. But he does know that it's Pataxian. And because it's Pataxian, the, the one thing you know is that people are really suspicious of anything Pataxian. It's their rival country. And mm -hmm. yeah, they, they have a very poor reputation here. Good to know. Yep. I assume Dago reveals this. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> like immediately, just shocking everyone. Oh, yeah, it's one of those things from Pataxian. Rasheen, is there anything you would like to share with the group? Well, I have possibly might have gotten us another ally, that, but that is to be seen in the morning. Wonderful. Tell me about them before we turn in. And he basically, right. once again, the whole idea is Matheson is doing the thing of, who did you talk to? What information did you get? What do you know? That kind of thing. That lovely woman that was sitting across from Mr. Sorbetto, I recognized her back from when she was a bit younger and struck up a conversation. She was highly impressed with our group, even you, Diego. She was also very shocked when I informed her that you are, in fact, the leader of this group. I didn't think I was, but I've... I've <laughs> Not you. <laughs> no. <laughs> I affected by the offer. <laughs> <laughs> You know, in, in like animes or cartoons where a side character is trying to talk and then the main character just pushes them off screen. That just happens. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds perfect. Wonderful. I will try to see if I can speak with them relatively soon. We don't know how tomorrow is going to go. So, Beto, anything interesting on yours? I did meet a rather interesting woman by, going by the name of Jathal. A bit secretive of her uh, origins, however, considering sounds like she probably has a similar history to my own. I will <laughs> let you do one last religion check. See, I find this funny because you say similar to your own, knowing full well that the person you're also talking to is also an underworld person. <laughs> See, I... <laughs> We never established that, so you just want oh, to. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, like I, we're joking that, like you know, like oh, it's just three days ago. I, I think we should have yeah, you guys yeah, yeah. know each other a few, like at least a couple months. Why don't we yeah. take this opportunity before we end for the night to like really yep. share like what you know about each other as a group? So, like Matheson, okay. you work in crimes. Yeah, smuggling. Okay. Uh, is there anything else you have shared with the party? No, I don't even think he shared the smuggler bit with the party because he doesn't need it to. I would assume that while he doesn't know about uh, Marquis Sorbetta specifically, Marquis Sorbetta's family probably knows about Matheson, potentially having had, uh, hired him previously, which I would assume was one of the reasons why they're just like, yes, go with this man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so are you two cool with that? Like, Absolutely. Yeah, okay. I have no issues with that. Okay. So Marquis, what have you shared with the party about your history? The land I hail from, apparently Rasheen knows what family I am from. Is that because I've shared it or just 
his oh i family. know to be honest i kind of like the idea that he worked for your family too so rasheen's backstory Perfect. is that he's been passed around from family to family as a servant and or slave depending yep. on like how legal Who? it is yep so i think rasheen and marquee knowing each other directly is actually a really cool idea okay i'm fine with that if you are hecked i'm perfectly fine with that also then again, back Excellent. when I knew you, you were still calling on fours in a tail. <laughs> now that's a lie. I've never crawled. <laughs> he doesn't want to admit it. I, th I like the idea of Rasheen having worked for your family for a while. So you two Perfect. know as much about each other as you can. I think that's fine. Yep, that's wonderful, because that means the person that I don't have to tell anything to is Diego, and I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Diego, I, I think his reputation is mixed, but like, yep. I think simultaneously being kind of legendary is still funny. Like, he's he's got a good mm. enough reputation that like, yeah, we want him on our team. <laughs> yeah, yeah like, something like that. It's useful both for diversions and also le le legitimate parts, <laughs> and he is actually skilled. Yeah, and he can actually help. draw a crowd. <laughs> That's one of the things that I Very like. Good. Math is in looking to Diego to use is like you are the ultimate distraction, and you will mm -hmm. love doing. It. You will by love the way, I, the that that is legitimately my fencing style. Is distraction. It's distractions yeah. and stuff. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's how I get panache. <laughs> you can get a panache by making a diversion. Yeah. <laughs> that's really cool. Okay, okay. Does Diego have anything else in his backstory? We're we just kind of slowly working that out. <laughs> no, I, 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 he, probably, he probably told everyone that he is after the man in black, which is the guy who killed his dad. Okay. Also, he's probably shared that he's been, he actually has been mentored by a giant. And, okay. and because he, he succeeded and passed the giant's test, and mastered all of his techniques. The belt that he's wearing is was actually the, a giant's belt that would have been passed on to a an apprentice giant, but he didn't have an apprentice giant. He just had me. <laughs> because giants are oh. a job, you just kind of you know apply <laughs> for it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Actually, Marquis, uh, I'm, I'm gonna, honorary giant. Marquis, I'm going to let you roll society to know what he means by the man in black. Oh, 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 oh. 24. One momento, one moment. <laughs> Finally, my rolls actually. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, illusion. The man in black is Tartushio the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good enough. Because Diego has described the man in black enough to you. And, you know, he yep. talks about him often enough. And, like, yeah. Yeah. He's a okay. text collector. Yeah. A profession. So I, I, you know what? This is really good. This is really good. I nope. like this dynamic. Nope. This is awesome. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so the night will pass. It is about eight or nine p.m. That was a lame party. <laughs> it's end. It's over at nine. <laughs> oh, we're staying up late tonight, boy. <laughs> well, uh, there's a reason for that. Actually, better. Question. Are you sure it's like eight or nine? It's not like nine thirteen or something like that with with, with this kind of setup. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, let me check. The dinner is over at... Holy shit, 9pm! This is not a... <laughs> I, I, I called it, oh my god. Excellent. Right at 9pm. <laughs> right at 9pm, on the dodge. You reach your rooms right. at 9pm. Like, 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 the like, I'm not even sleepy. Yeah, no, this is what it's 9pm, the servant just like, let's collect the information. You know? yeah. <laughs> just 9pm, the servant just walk by, take the plates of food from our hands. <laughs> no, no, it's done, it's over. Go to your rooms. <laughs> Oh, that's really good. I like that a lot. Okay, so <laughs> you guys, uh, I, I'm going to assume you just get shut eye immediately. Just like, oh, out. <laughs> like, like, sure, unless somebody comes to our door to talk more. Just mm -hmm. sitting there awkwardly for a while. Like, so guys, how about that joust competition last month? <laughs> I have no idea what you're on about, sir. We I'll be gladly intrigued like as I shut more. my eyes. Just don't worry, I am listening. <laughs> <laughs> I should have had you done like 30 more backflips on that table and maybe it would have been time <laughs> if, if Diego snores so loud it distracts everyone do I get panache <laughs> if this is a combat scenario I <laughs> so essentially with pillow, essentially <laughs> late in the night uh, I need everyone to make perception checks it is about 3am Diego and Matheson, you are both roused from your sleep by the sounds of combat outside, and that is where we will end our session.
<laughs> and he ever sits up and he has those like, like those cucumbers over his eyes or something. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's really funny. <laughs>